so hi everyone uh, thank you so much for uh, joining citizen matters as we try and understand what's happening in chennai in the middle of like a fresh spell of rains uh, so this has been uh, i think this is an issue that's been in all our minds since uh, since the floods of 2015 and every year we've seen a different way that the rains have affected the city and how the issue is manifested uh so after the events of last week and what uh, what is in store for the rest of the monsoon we thought it would be a good idea to bring together people who have been working on the ground who have been looking at these issues uh sharply to understand uh what are the issues uh, that chennai faces in becoming flood proof and what is sort of a realistic road map for the city in in figuring out this whole flood management problem that we've been dealing with uh so today we have a diverse panel who who uh, who will be joining us to speak on this so uh we have kripa who's an author of the book rivers remember uh so she has looked into what the issues were which caused the 2015 floods quite extensively and some of the you know harrowing stories of what citizens have been put through when something like this happens especially the people who are most the most marginalized folks uh, in the city uh and we have raj who's a geoanalytics manager at the world resources institute uh, i think all of us would have come across one of raj's maps in in the recent week so he is uh, looking at G gis mapping and other solutions for uh, how we can understand our cities better how to manage flood plains and what are the problems when you know different water bodies get encroached and choked uh we have mr david who is with the araporia com who is an active campaigner against like illegal constructions uh and also looking into the knee, uh, how the cmda actually functions what are the problems with approvals being granted to buildings and how we don't how we fail to protect our uh, water bodies uh we are mr kannan who is the secretary of the tinagar residents welfare association i think in the past week we've heard a lot about the suffering that residents of tinagar have gone through after the initial promise of it being one of the areas which uh was the focus of the smart city project uh then we have miss mrs ganga shridhar who is uh, from mandeveli so there's there are there's a small pocket where residents have managed to work together with authorities to sort of safeguard themselves from this whole issue of flooding in their streets and so we wanted to find out how they managed to do it what kind of an uphill task was it for them to get this to actually happen in their area and whether looking at these localized solutions uh uh could be the way forward so i uh, i now uh, ask meenakshi to take over and moderate this uh, session for us thank you thank you very much aruna uh, it is actually a very heartwarming moment for us uh, at the citizen matters team because when the last floods happened uh, there was no citizen matters in uh, chennai and that is not to say that the floods would have happened but maybe we would have done a seminar then to understand what were the learnings we are here now i'm very um, uh glad to say that a lot of people in this space uh support us uh are willing to talk to us work with us uh just for those who have joined us for the first time i just like to give you a little bit about us we are a civic media platform we look at critical urban issues ideas and solutions that make for better cities so we dive deep into issues that affect our everyday quality of life that could be water mobility public safety air quality uh governance in public life quality of education environment local jobs so much that affects all our lives on a day to day basis even as we move within the environs of the city as we know it we have three dedicated chapters now we started with bengaluru in 2013 uh, in the current form in our non profit form we have chennai which started in 2016 and we have mumbai now our most recent chapter uh, we also publish articles that are related to policy and practice relevant to urban issues across india and the most important thing that we want to share with all of you here in the hope that you will all continue to collaborate and work with us is that we are if nothing we are a basic collaborative model we have professional journalists we have experts practitioners and citizens then you will see a microcosm of that on this panel itself that come to us share their story share their learnings and we are very proud to say that our work has made a difference on the ground in getting more people involved coming forward to make cities better you may hear the word urvani sometimes that's our parent organization urvani foundation it's a non profit trust that is supported by donors and citizen contributors like several of you here we invite you to get involved with our work in many ways thank you thank you for joining us today and with that i'd like to 
Uh, oh, we lost David. I think he's back in the waiting room. With that, I'd like to, uh, to throw the first question to Kripa. I know you have a hard stop at five. Kripa, we'll try and at least cover those topics before uh, five. So tell me, deja vu of 2015. <laughs> Any lessons learned at all? Or were, were these a different kind of floods that needed a different set of less, lessons? Or was it same old, same old again? I think uh, the biggest lesson is that now all of us know Pradeep really well. <laughs> Down now to weather man, and we take him more seriously, including the airport authority of India, apparently. So, um, but jokes apart, um, I think, I think in terms of how quick the response was, I we can't really, you know, we can't say that there, nothing has changed between 2015 and now because uh, the sea of difference, in fact, in actually seeing an administration that works and out on the streets. Uh, between 2015 and now, because what was infuriating during the previous floods was the total sense of abandonment that you know all of us felt, and uh, the kind of you know that release of water in the middle of the night without any information being uh, reaching people, uh, and the quantum of water that was released at one go, all of that, and so I think in terms of the reservoirs, I think there has been a little bit of uh, you know caution exercise this time. But that is not to say that, you know, uh, j just because we are cautious after the rains have come doesn't mean things are going to automatically improve. And, and we have a really long road ahead of us. And I saw an interview in which they say that they have their plans for the next five to 10 years to see and work, uh, you know, how, how to deal with floods. Because I think now they have, with this, I think it is now confirmed that we are going to see a repeat of this and this is this was not a one off event and that we are going to have to deal with this uh and it's not something that you can just close your eyes and wish away so i think that that much i think the administration has realized and people also have come to realize that some hard questions need to be asked of those who are, who are sitting in power we, we can't let things go uh, as usual after 2015 because we I don't think we have it in us to handle one more, one more of those. So thanks, thanks, Kripa. I want to ask David one of these hard questions that I know many citizens want to ask. How is what is the system of permissions? How is it that zones get notified, denotified, changed, and construction goes on? What is the role that should be expected by citizens of CMDA? What is the issue? Is there capacity lacking? Is there not enough expertise to be able to anticipate some of these problems? What has been your experience, uh, David? Uh, good evening. Uh, we find that uh, CMDA is lacking in expertise and um, foresight. Uh, when the, uh, I'll speak both in English and Tamil. Yeah, yeah, please. For a long uh, foresight, how the city is going to grow. And the either foresight, then most of the water bodies, they have reclassified. They are the main culprits in this issue. Till now, for the past three years, we have been regularly Objecting to all the reclassification advertisements they put once in three months. So we file an objection. That's the objection file. And we have to file an objection file. 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 We have to file an objection Facebook group, Sridhar Venkatraman, CR Balaji, Prashant, Mari Nangala, return online, all objections are raised. Objection is not going to be able to do it. If you have a media, you can accept it. Objection is not going to be able to do it. It's an opaque process. This is the same thing. Reclassification is uh, acres from uh, this water body, hectares, they want it converted into a Presidential in the institutional zone. That's why the process is not going to be done. We object. 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 We 
அதுக்கப்புறம் தான் அவங்க டிசைட் பண்ணோம் ஆனா அந்த மாதிரி எந்த ப்ராசஸுமே இல்லை அதுக்கப்புறம் என்ன நடக்குதுன்னே தெரியல திடீர்னு பார்த்தா ரீகிளாசிபிகேஷன் வந்து கொடுத்துடுறாங்க அப்படி ரீகிளாசிபிகேஷன் கொடுத்ததுல தான் வி ஹேட் டு ஃபைல் அ கேஸ் அட் செமஞ்சேரி போலீஸ் ஸ்டேஷன் ஃபார் த தாமரைக்கேணி இது அதுவும் ரீகிளாசிபிகேஷன் கொடுத்துருந்தாங்க ஸோ டில் நவ் அந்த மாதிரி ரீகிளாசிபிகேஷன் கொடுத்துட்டு இருக்காங்க சிஎம்பி ஆக்ட் ஒன் என் அண்ட் த இன்டர்லிங்கிங் இப்ப இது வந்து ப்ராடர் நீங்க வந்து சென்னை ஜிசிசி சென்னை சிட்டி டூ ஹண்ட்ரட் வாட்ஸ் மாத்திரம் பேச பேச வேண்டாம்னு நினைக்கிறேன் நான் எப்படி நினைக்கிறேன்னா செங்கல்பட்டு காஞ்சிபுரம் அண்ட் திருவள்ளூர் ஆர் பார்ட் ஆஃப் திஸ் சென்னை ஏன்னா அப்ஸ்ட்ரீம்ல இருந்துதான் எல்லா ஃபிளட் வாட்டர்ஸும் லேக்ஸ் அண்ட் பாண்ட்ஸ்ல இருந்து வருது சிட்டிக்குள்ள இட் கம்ஸ் த்ரூ கொசஸ்தலையாறு கூவம் அடையார் அண்ட் த மேன் மேட் பக்கிங்ஹாம் கெனால் ரைட்டா எல்லாம் கிரிஸ் கிராஸ் ஆகி சிட்டிக்குள்ள வருது அப்ஸ்ட்ரீம்ல இருந்தா வாட்டர் ஃப்ளோ வருது ஸோ அது எல்லாமே சிட்டியை கிராஸ் பண்ணி தான் இட் எம்டிஸ் இன் டு த பே ஆஃப் பெங்கால் ஸோ இந்த வாட்டர் பாடிஸ் எல்லாம் இன்டர் கனெக்டட் வித் கெனால்ஸ் இந்த இன்டர் கனெக்டட் கெனால்ஸ் எல்லாத்தையுமே ஆல் திஸ் ரியல் எஸ்டேட் ஹேஸ் ஃபாலோட் இட் அப் இதுக்கு வந்து பிடபிள்யூடி அண்ட் சிஎம்டிஏ ஆர் ஹேண்ட் இன் ஹேண்ட் டு கிவ் ஆல் தீஸ் இது அப்ரூவல்ஸ் பெரிய 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 பார்சல்ஸ் லேண்ட் பார்சல்ஸ் முன்னால இந்த இஷ்யூ இல்லை அவ்வளோ ஏன்னா இட் வாஸ் ஆல் இண்டிவிஜுவல் ஹவுசிங் ஸ்மால் லேவுட்ஸ் இப்போ வந்து கார்பரேட்ஸ் கம் இன் டு இட் ஹண்ட்ரட் ஏக்கர்ஸ் ஃபிஃப்டி ஏக்கர்ஸ் கேட்டட் கம்யூனிட்டி ஹைரைஸ் அப்பார்ட்மெண்ட் ஐடி கம்பெனிஸ் எல்லாம் வரும்போது இந்த கெனால்ஸ் வந்து இன்டர் கிராஸ் இது அது உள்ள போகுது அந்த உள்ள போற இடத்துல அவங்க என்ன பண்றாங்கன்னா ரீரூட்டிங் ஆஃப் கெனால்ஸ்னு ஒன்று கேட்கறாங்க கேட்டு அதை ரீ காம்பவுண்ட் வால் பக்கத்துல எடுத்துட்டு போய் ஓரமா கொண்டு போய் அப்படி வெளியில விடுறாங்க அதோட நேச்சுரல் கிரேடியன்ட்ல இருந்து கொண்டு போயிடுறாங்க மா வேற ஒரு டேரக்ஷனுக்கு இந்த இஷ்யூ வந்து குன்றத்தூர்ல முத்துக்குமரன் இன்ஸ்டிடியூஷன்ஸோட கேஸ்ல வந்து ஹைகோர்ட்ல டூ தௌசண்ட் ஃபோர்டீன் பிப்டீன்ல கிளியரா தி ஹேவ் கிவன் ஜட்மெண்ட் தட் நோ கெனால் சுட் பி ரீரூட்டட் கொடுத்துருக்காங்க கொடுத்ததுக்கு அப்புறம் டில் நவ் வி ஃபைண்ட் தட் கெனால்ஸ் ஆர் பீங் ரீரூட்டட் அண்டர் ஸ்பெஷல் ஜிஓஸ் கிவன் பை ரெவன்யூ டிபார்ட்மெண்ட் இப்ப துறப்பாக்கம் ரேடியல் ரோட்ல பல்லாவரம் துறப்பாக்கம் ரேடியல் ரோட்ல ஒரு ஐடி கம்பெனி இருக்கு ஐ எம்பசி டெக் பார்க்குன்னு அதுக்கு பாத்தீங்கன்னா ரீரூட் ஜிஓ கொடுத்துருக்காங்க அதுக்கப்புறம் லாஸ்ட் வீக் ஐ வெண்ட் இந்த ஃபீல்ட்ல வந்து ஒரு ஃபோர் ஃபைவ் டேஸ் முன்னால மழை பெஞ்ச உடனே ஒரு ரெண்டு கீழ்கட்டலை அண்ட் பல்லாவரம் லேக்கோட கெனால் வந்து நிறைய என்க்ரோச்மெண்ட்ஸ் இருக்குன்னு சொல்லி ரெவன்யூ அண்ட் பிடபிள்யூடி அபிஷியல்ஸ் கேம் வி வென் ஃபார் அன் இன்ஸ்பெக்ஷன் கூடயே போனேன் ஒரு பெரிய லேண்ட் பார்சல் கூட வந்து அது கெனால் வந்து போய் நிக்குது அவங்க காம்பவுண்ட் வால் கிட்ட அங்க கீழே ஓட்ட போட்டிருக்காங்க பெரிய கான்கிரீட் காம்பவுண்ட் வால் இருக்கு எட்டி அங்க பாத்தீங்கன்னா அங்க மண்ணு போட்டு மூடி இருக்கு அந்த கெனால் அவங்க காம்பவுண்ட் வாலுக்கு வெளியில அதுக்கப்புறம் ஏணி போட்டு எடுத்து எடுத்து விட்டாங்க எடுத்து விட்டு உள்ள பாத்தீங்கன்னா அவங்க காம்பவுண்ட் அவங்க ஏரியாக்குள்ள காம்பவுண்டுக்குள்ள அது நல்லா பக்காவா கான்கிரீட்ல எயிட் ஃபீட் டெப்த் டென் ஃபீட் பிரெத் ஆனா நல்லா பக்காவா கட்டி இருக்காங்க மேன் ஹோல்ஸ் எல்லாம் அங்க அங்க ப்ரொவைட் பண்ணிருக்காங்க ஓபன் பண்ணி பார்த்தா தண்ணி போகவே இல்லை ஏன்னா அங்க வெளியில மண்ணு போட்டு மூடிட்டாங்க அப்புறம் எடுத்து இது பண்ணி ஸோ இது எப்படின்னா இந்த மாதிரி இஷ்யூஸ் எல்லாம் வரும்போது தெர் இஸ் நோ கிளியர் கட் ஐடியா மழை வந்ததுன்னா எங்க பிளாக் ஆச்சுன்னு தெரியாது எங்க போய் பாப்பீங்க இந்த மாதிரி ஒரு ப்ராப்பர்ட்டிக்குள்ள போகுது அதுக்கு யாருக்கு ஆக்சஸ் இருக்கு இட் இஸ் அது பப்ளிக் ப்ராப்பர்ட்டி கெனால் இஸ் அ பப்ளிக் ப்ராப்பர்ட்டி ஆனா ஒரு காம்பவுண்ட்குள்ள போய் இதாயிருது பிளாக் ஆயிருது அப்ப யார் போய் அதை வந்து பிளாக் ஆயிருக்கான்னு பாக்குறது இன்ஸ்பெக்ட் பண்றது கிளீனா இருக்கா இந்த இஷ்யூஸ் எல்லாம் இருக்கு ஐ திங்க் வில் பி ஃபைலிங் ஆர்டிஐஸ் நெக்ஸ்ட் வீக் ஏன்னா நாங்க இப்பதான் அதை என்கவுண்டர் பண்ணோம் இந்த பிடபிள்யூடி நிறைய ஆர்டிஐ ஃபைல் பண்ணோம் இந்த மாதிரி இஷ்யூஸ் எல்லாம் ஸோ இட்ஸ் அ வெரி ப்ராடர் இஷ்யூ அப்ஸ்ட்ரீம் இப்ப செங்கல்பட்டு காஞ்சிபுரம் திருவள்ளூரை வந்து நீங்க கட் ஆஃப் பண்ணி எல்லாம் இந்த இதை பண்ண முடியாது ரெயின் வாட்டர்னா அது மொத்தம் இந்த மூணு டிஸ்ட்ரிக் பிளஸ் சென்னை தான் No, no, I was going to say that that actually you gave me a great segue to ask what I wanted to ask Raj, saying, is there, Raj, are you there? Sorry, I don't see him on. Yes, I am. Yeah, hi. Uh, sorry, uh, David, I was just taking the point that you made yeah.
where did these exist uh, can we even go back and find out which ones we've lost which ones are still available tell us about your work using all the visualization uh, sure. sure actually first uh, you know when we talk about the canals and lakes we have to understand that these are not natural first um, see all, all of these are artificial and what you're having is a as a canal as a drain which is uh, you know carrying water from um, place x to place y uh, it not it is not necessary that it is following the best uh, route or the you know topographically right route um, so to understand that we have to talk about the history of uh, these lakes and canals first um, so the first thing is uh, 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 like in chennai the uh, particularly with the lower uh, uh, orders of stream that is the smaller streams uh, whatever was natural did not exist even before urbanization it never existed um, so the first step is uh, uh, when they started constructing all the lakes what what is a lake actually if you, if you uh, remove all this palikarnai and the flat plains of adyar and all those uh, rivers apart every every other lake that the 4000 6000 lakes that you have in the overall metropolitan region is all artificial now what does it mean is that uh, you will have like hundreds of smaller streams and uh, those were not sufficient for uh, irrigating crops, right? So they began building buns. And uh, so these buns are the biggest problem, actually. If, if you talk about flood terms, they are actually a problem because you are stopping the drain and you are going to, uh, you know, saturate the soil more, right? So that means more rainwater cannot be stored. And I mean, uh, uh, the, the basic idea behind the construction of lake is to have a saturated soil, right? So they wanted to utilize as much water as possible. Uh, this was the, how the agriculture one was done. So once you have a lake, a uh, bund was there and uh, natural streams used to flow into it. And uh, below that, they completely changed the drains. This was long before urbanization itself. They start changing the drains. And uh, how they change the drains is that uh, they make sure that the more amount of land, that is the command area, is as bigger as possible, right? So that is what they look at, how to irrigate the land better. So if you look at majority of the outlets of the canal, outlet of the lakes, not necessarily that they will be following the natural terrain. Instead, they'll be placed at a higher elevation so that they can feed, like feed more. Uh, if you look at every floodplain or every other thing, this is a very common thing. Like they put it in a higher contour so that you can irrigate more. Uh, this is how the canals uh, are constructed. Uh, now, when urbanization starts, the first thing that will be taken away is the command area, right? So because these are privately owned land and people start buying it, they start converting it, etc. And <clears throat> I'm so sorry. Uh, so if you start converting that, what happens is that uh, uh, in Chennai's terrain, it's a flatter terrain. So you don't have many number of outlet canals. Uh, sorry, you'll have many number of outlet canals, unlike Bengaluru, where you have only two canals, right? So there are, it's, a, it's a narrow terrain. So it's, uh, you will not have that many uh, uh, canal. So what happens is that uh, you start taking away, you start closing canals one by one. Um, and what is remaining when the time of urbanization is happening need not be the most, uh, you know, uh, topographically suitable canal that we need to have to take the water. And uh, this is what we have ended up right now. And uh, post that, even during urbanization, like what um, Mr. David was mentioning, uh, you have smaller, uh, you know, engineering troubles, etc. Now, um, with uh, Chennai's case where there is no more natural drain, um, uh, for thousands of years there has not been natural drains anymore, uh, uh, for the lower order streams, you need to recreate this uh, you know, lower order uh, uh, drainage network. Uh, now that lower order drainage network, which is in, in, a, in an urban uh, setup, we call it as the stormwater drain network, right? So that is completely not there, right? So, uh, and to study that, we need to have a very good topography map of Chennai, which is purely updated once in a while, so that we know what is the upstream area, what is the downstream area, where the water would move, et cetera, et cetera. That is required and that is not there. What we do is the blanket uh, drainage construction, right? So uh, every drain is like, you know, you dig like uh, one meter and two meters here over there, et cetera, et cetera. And there is no uh, principles of hydraulics uh, which have been applied in anywhere over here. The discharge rate between uh, so if you are having one street, which is, uh, you know, where you are, where, let's say you have designed it very scientifically uh, to carry water, the second drain that is going to collect it should be larger, right? That is the logic. But uh, of course, we don't do that because everywhere it is like a uniform, uh, single uh, uh, engineering solution. So uh, Chennai's case is that there is no natural drain apart from the uh, Adair Kuom and uh, uh, Pallikarani system. There is nothing natural. Uh, encroachments over there are a real problem. Uh, but uh, uh, encroachments over the lake is not the causality behind the flooding. 
but we could have used it as a temporary measure to uh, when you don't have a strong um, you know uh, canal network when you don't have a st strong storm water network you could have used this as a buffer uh, to hold the water and move it away i mean since uh, you know let's say in the uh, uh, before agriculture came let's say if the quant the discharge is like say 10000 uh, qsx in a particular valley uh, what is the discharge right now? I mean, what is the discharge during agriculture will be very different. And uh, we have to figure that out and we have to calculate and we have to recreate uh, those canals. Now, that is where we are lacking right now. Um, and uh, as I said, like we, uh, outside these uh, uh, small, I mean, certain systems, everything else is uh, engineered and we have to understand that engineering and we have to make sure that the new urbanization and the old urbanization follows that uh, you know, understands that and creates the new drain network. Without that, uh, it is not going to um, work. Um, that is, I mean, water has to move uh, somewhere, right? So you need to have that. That I feel is the biggest uh, culprit, which is not there. And uh, lakes and encroachment, uh, the role of them is very small. Um, I mean, it is a very, uh, what, what we can say, the legality is a different issue, like whether it is a public land, who has taken it, et cetera, et cetera, that is a different story. But uh, to solve floods, it is not necessary that you need to um, have the artificial lakes. You need to have the natural water bodies, but not necessarily the artificial lakes. But uh, we have to talk about uh, how the water is going to move, not about how the water is going to be stored and uh, blocked. Very interesting point you offer there, Raj, uh, that, uh, you know, while there is some part of it that we see very visibly and, and it, it appears to be the biggest cause, I hear you saying it is more about moving the water and therefore designing the drainage system in the right way. So on that point, I would like to ask Ganga. I know Ganga had a problem and dropped out of the call. Ganga, are you back? Yeah, I'm back. Yeah. Ganga, hi. I want to ask you about yeah. your experience and whether you were able to actually, when you were able to involve the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 officials in designing the drainage in your area were you able to bring some of these scientific principles into place saying we want to understand the gradient or the way that yes. you can't just take it through our street and let it just close at one point etc so please share right. with us your experience of how you were able to engage and you for for that matter i want to say that you truly embody what we want to achieve at uh, citizen matters is that knowledge plus uh, you know the desire to make a change equals citizens action so uh, would love to hear your story. Yeah, uh, I'll actually like to make a presentation actually, so that so the pictures speak more than what we do. So uh, I hope I have the time for that, Lena. I mean, actually, I'll need some seven to ten minutes for that. About seven minutes. Will that be fine? Yeah. Well, we wanted it to be interactive, so if you can make it. Um, seven, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll probably minutes, stop because... it uh, if it's. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's but we do want to hear the story as well. Yeah, so let's the idea is that. when we started off, we were we were like uh, babies who didn't know anything about stormwater drains. Yeah, yeah. We didn't know the difference between stormwater drain and uh, metro sewage drains. Anything that's round on the street is a drain for us. And so all that knowledge and how we uh, got it, that's what I would like to share with you. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. I don't so, know. Uh, is it, uh, I'm just anything? sharing my screen. Yes, yeah, Meenakshi. Yeah. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, yes. Go Great. Ahead. Yeah. So um, this is how it was in 2015. Okay. Uh, the first uh, slide that you see. So this is one of the entry points of uh, Rajasthan. It's called the TP Scheme Road. Okay. And today, after the 2021 rains, this the same street, uh, just half an hour after the rain, it's it's been like this. Okay. And uh, it's basically the story of uh, the success of the small success, I would say because this is an iterative continuous thing, which uh, probably it has to be, it's a, it's a basically regular desilting and various things that have to be a normal part of uh, any system, which is what is going to give us such clean streets always. Okay, so uh, basically being a part of uh, one of the active RWS, so we are a part of the 173 board of, board of uh, zone 13. Um, so uh, I, I basically would take the opportunity, to, we actually got, got the opportunity to interact with many other RWA members. So what I'm going to share with you is the overall experience of all of us. Okay, so, so this is how it was in 2015. Okay, and um, 
this this was another entry point okay this was the vela the raja street entry point and if you see the sloping uh, it, it, the, the, main, the what you see on the other side is the main arkemat road okay the way we we belong to the inner roads and the way the roads are sloped is all the water from the main roads would come into our inner roads and we were like an island okay our our street alone was dry whereas from all around we were marooned this is how uh, tp scheme road was in 2015 okay and what you see here are a group of angry residents who are trying to make way through the what you see in front of this is the adyar punga wall okay so there was no storm water drain in the street and uh, this was one of the key entries from the akema road okay and these people were actually uh, marooned here for number of days without power and this is a frustrated state when they actually got into the roads and made holes into the adyar punga wall so that water could uh, go okay and that's when uh, th th things somehow uh, the 2015 floods subsided and things got got back to normal and that's when arapur uh, i come to whom we are very thankful they uh, initiated a citizen awareness uh, uh, meet and during that meet that was an eye opener meet actually uh, that's when we came to know what storm water drains are so they actually shared this what you see is the map of the storm water drain network of our ward the 173 ward okay so this is not something that every citizen needs to know but it's very important that we need to know to know where exactly does the excess rain water go after we have harvested it okay so what you see here is this is my street raja street okay where you can see that storm water drains were present somewhat working and that's why we were not completely flooded but at the same time all the connecting roads that where my arrow is going the velai the raja street the kandaswami street and the tp scheme road didn't have any storm water drain network at all and we actually uh, with the help of the experts who were guiding us we could we could actually trace the end point to the adyar punga so where you see 2 3 and 4 these were the end points which was actually heading into the adyar river okay so this is an eye opener that okay we needed the water to be sloping and it had to uh, go through the storm water drains uninterrupted which means that there was no silt or any obstruction in wood and it had to enter this adyar uh, the adyar river and we finally when we went when we went into the area punga we realized that the punga people had closed the entry point because sewage water was mixed with the storm water drain so that was one of the first uh, blockages that we reached okay and uh, during this whole experience we knew uh, we, we we were actually uh, trained as to you know how to open complaints online complaints interact with the gcc officials okay so if you see here uh, this was the first auditing experience that we had with the uh, gcc here so this lady was the uh, ae of our area uh, at that time okay and that was a time when we actually saw these storm water drains getting opened and got to know what exactly should we look look out for okay and um, honestly speaking uh, i feel that every resident should be responsible and should be aware of their area what exactly is where just like how we know about a house and uh, we can always hold the government uh, responsible obviously the government has a big role to play but to uh, divert their uh, attention to the respective place it's finally it's it's our street and it's important that we do uh, bring their notice there okay so during this uh, auditing is when uh, we realized that there were a lot of these there was a lot of desilting that was needed and various things that i'll be showing you now so thankfully the rk metro which was also flooded at that time the corporation uh, took complete control of it and this is what you see here is the desilting process the mega desilting process that took place in 2016 and along with that at that time we uh, we we had put in lots of petitions uh, regular complaints for need of desilting of storm water drains and for uh, laying the new storm water drains in the streets where Uh, there were no none okay and what were the findings that we uh, actually what was it that we actually found during the auditing so the very first thing was that many storm water drains did not have any any lid at all or the lids were broken okay so we actually caught these pictures like this and we would post it to the ae or on the nama chennai uh, apps okay and finally we got the end result like this okay once our uh, complaint got registered and we used to thank them for this Okay. Secondly, if you see, uh, if a storm water drain is broken uh, and there's a garbage bin around it, this is how it would be. All this garbage would go inside the storm water drain and completely clog it. Most of it would be plastics, sanitary waste, and everything, and it will completely clog. 
the the magnanimity of it we saw it when we actually saw the resulting process in procedure process the second main thing we saw was that people had happily connected their sewage uh, system to the stormwater drain so that they didn't have to pay a separate connection for metro uh, to the metro line and this was mainly happening in the uh, slum settlements so we have a totem in our area so those people had happily connected their sewage besides that we also had seen uh, sorry for this gross picture that being that's being shared so here we have a broken sewer line which is crossing the uh, stormwater drain okay so all this is how sewage was getting mixed, mixed into the stormwater drain and we caught these pictures and we shared it with the aes and uh, the respective people in the corporation that's when they realized that okay these residents mean business they are not going to leave it until these problems are getting so every time there was an auditing uh, there was a desilting being done in the past 5 to 6 years we used to be always on the ground catching pictures to find out what exactly was a problem and we used to be reporting it okay another thing we found there was a problem was there was no synchronization between the corporation the metro uh, sewage board and the uh, tned the kind of problems we would face is that sewage is blocked and they need the metro water people to come and come with a jet trawler and uh, remove the sewage and then one of us from our rwa would have to call uh, and sync synchronize with the a thankfully by then we had got the expertise and we were in sync with most of the aes and we were able to get them on ground so this was one such a situation we were where we had to call the uh, metro what uh, metro people to come and remove the sewage water from the stormwater drain there was another instance where uh, power lines were going through the stormwater drains and the laborers who were desilting it they were getting shock okay and they were they refused to desilt it anymore again uh, we residents uh, had to intervene we called the eba and the eb line man there and we asked them to turn off the power okay so we found that when residents were cooperating and we were pushing them things were happening faster and sooner and to our satisfaction so if you see here this is the entire desilting uh, process that is in progress and this much silt was removed and more than silt it used to be sewage that used to be coming out from here the end result was that we finally got an in, uh, an entire stormwater drain which was clear okay so if you see what what all did we find during the auditing uh, was that the uh, stormwater drain entry points were clogged okay and uh, the sloping was not proper for many stormwater drains and water from the stormwater drain could not empty at the end point as it had been sealed at the punga for which we had uh, again uh, raised a petition with the uh, river restoration team okay and number of streets that we had identified which didn't have uh, swds uh, stormwater drains we basically um, requested for stormwater drains to be uh, laid for them so yes this is how a stormwater drain should look so we had people going in and taking these pictures and if you have a, a flat stormwater drain like this where you can see the light from one end to end on another end it works for us at least for those who are in the inner roads okay and we actually saw the uh, immediate effect in the rains the, that followed immediately so something that was like this in 2015 uh, during after the next rains it was like this and we had some media articles uh, which basically posted this so to sum it up what was it that worked for all all these rws so when i'm talking about the rws we have this the raja street rw the tunga view we have rk nagar all these uh, mrc nagar we are all a group of rws who have been pushing all these years uh, to the 173 ward and this this is the decent success that we have seen okay, there have been uh, uh, issues i won't say there were no issues there have been issues in some streets which probably have to be uh, brought brought to notice Okay, so what is it that we that work for the RWAs? Periodic request of desilting. So what you see here is regular desilting of all those entry points from where water has to go in. So if this is something that is happening just today morning, thanks to one of my RWA friends who uh, shared it. So all these entry points are being cleaned. Uh, periodic desilting of your recharge wells. So uh, the residents need to get their recharge wells cleaned. And uh, again when when it's flooding everything comes out including sewage water from the manhole so the residents initiate that if the uh, metro water are not sending people uh, to clean uh, the sewage water we we ask them to send the jet trawler to clean it before the monsoons most importantly what we saw was most of the stormwater drains were completely clogged with garbage so we we conducted garbage awareness uh, sessions and here you see the residents actually coming out on the street 
and doing cleaning of operations because this is how the street used to be at one point of time before all these operations started. Okay. Then um, another group of residents, really proactive residents, would actually walk down in pouring rain to see how the slope is and to identify because 2018 was a time when it was drought. Okay, we need for even one drop of water, we would want to uh, conserve it somewhere. And that's when, when the corporation was pushing all of us to put uh, dig recharge wells. So at that time, even in pouring rain, we would actually walk down to see where is the water sloping, which are the ideal locations for the recharge wells. So if you see here, we, we, uh, we are laying various recharge wells at uh, different endpoints where we thought there were no stormwater drains. So probably the recharge well should first percolate all the water to the ground and replenish our groundwater and then send it to these stormwater drains. Okay. Ganga, and yes. I yes, I'm almost. Say, no, no, no. Okay, yeah. finish. Okay, finish that line. Then I'll. Yes, 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 yes. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Finish the line. Hmm. Okay. And uh, most importantly, it is to be regular interactions with uh, officials through meets and events. So if you see, this is one of the events that um, uh, Arapur had organized for us, wherein the RDC and the uh, corporation uh, commissioner had come come down. And that's when we had requested for the stormwater drains. Okay, so all these regular interactions with uh, GCC enables us to make sure that our problems are there in there uh, and getting attended to at the right time. Okay, most importantly, we took help of media. Okay, to uh, highlight problems that were not being attended. Okay, finally, what you see, uh, 2020, in spite of the lockdown, stormwater drains were relayed in some places which were malfunctioning, and uh, fresh stormwater drains were laid for the entire stretch, which didn't have. And what you see here, finally, uh, November 2015 used to be like this, and 2021 is like this. Okay, so basically, what I uh, my, the gist of it is residents' interaction is important. Government has to do their role. Okay, at the end of it, when we saw the Mailapur Chitrakulam tank and the Kapali tank full this year, Chitrakulam was full almost after uh, four decades. It was because the, the proper desilting had been done for the tanks uh, ground, and at the same time, all the connecting stormwater drains had been desilted. Okay, so this is a scene uh, that we would all love to behold, where water is where it should be and not everywhere. Thank you. Ganga, I think you should actually help us to, to or rather we should have a Citizen Matters session on the various steps that you did. This was this was really eye opening in terms of how much work has gone into it. But still, I suppose that twelve minutes don't do you justice, or fourteen minutes. I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry I, I, I kind of we have from seven questions. to twelve minutes. But uh, this was the minimum I could shorten uh, so that I could just share the experience because you wanted me to share our experience. Yeah, with no, this is fantastic, fantastic. Clearly, there is power in citizens coming together. But I have somebody who will tell us the other end of the story as well. Somebody who was, despite their efforts, very, very disgruntled. Somebody who was very upset, have been complained. Mr. Kandan, are you able to unmute yourself? I saw that you had just dropped off the call. Unmute Pandringla. Mr. Kandan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. now. Yes, yes, yes. So we want to hear your experience of how over the years your complaints and your concerns were not addressed and then you found yourself in the situation that you had never found yourself before. So over to you, Mr. Kandan. Yeah, see, I am the Secretary of Teenager Residents Welfare Association. Uh, we have been fighting for a long, for a different issues. Nariya issues, Teenager Reporto, Arika Nariya Irke. In the LMN, one of the issues is the smart city issue. The smart city one the poor and also no residents welfare association consult puny punning on some but the angle over meeting put on the popular. In fact, we are the only registered association in Tinaga, but the angle in the meeting of Kubra Matana. Before in the uh, in the 2015 line, there is a smart city project Aram Shabode, uh, yeah, in the flat was a very board potter, smart city Tinaga, waste of taxpayer money or very board potter. And the board one is still it is there in my in, in front of my apartment. It's still the board is there. And the In fact, in the smart city work, in the storm water drain, summer storm water drain open money for you know, the new order. Then I'm very 
கவர்மெண்ட் நோட்டீஸ் கொண்டு வந்திருக்கோம் பட் என்ன பிரச்சனை நோ பிடி சீம்ஸ் டு டேக் எனி ஸ்டெப் அகெயின்ஸ்ட் கைண்ட் ஆஃப் ஒர்க்ஸ் மெயினா பாத்தீங்கன்னா இப்போ கமர்ஷியல் எஸ்டாப்ளிஷ்மெண்ட்ல ஜிஆர்டி போத்தீஸ் சரானா ஸ்டோர் இவங்கெல்லாம் ஹாஸ்டல்ஸ் ரன் பண்றாங்க போத் பாய்ஸ் ஹாஸ்டல்ஸ் அண்ட் கேர்ள்ஸ் ஹாஸ்டல்ஸ் இந்த ஹாஸ்டல்ல மீறுற சில ஃபுட் எல்லாம் கொண்டு வந்து அந்த ஸ்ட்ராங் வாட்டர் தண்ணியில கொட்டிடுறாங்க இதெல்லாம் உள்ள போய் அடைச்சிக்கிட்டு இட் கெட்ஸ் பிளாக் இது வந்து அட் த எமர்ஜென்சி டைம்ல அது மூவ் ஆகவும் மாட்டேங்குது அது ஃபுல்லா ரேட்ஸ் அண்ட் மைசஸ் இதுதான் அங்கே மூவ்மெண்ட் ஜாஸ்தி இருக்கு பிகாஸ் ஆஃப் த ஃபுட் தட் தே கேட் இது நாங்கள் நிறைய வாட்டி சொல்லியாச்சு மோர் இது பிரச்சனை என்னன்னு கேட்டால் டூ தௌசண்ட் ஃபிஃப்டீன் ஃப்ளட்ஸ்ல அப்போ இருந்த எம்எல்ஏ கலையராஜன் வாஸ் ரியலி ஹெல்ப்ஃபுல் பட் அப்போ வந்து நாங்கள் செக் பண்ணிட்டே வரும்போது பார்த்தீங்கன்னா இப்போ இருக்கிற அன் கருணாநிதின்ற எம்எல்ஏவோடைய கடை அன்பழகன் பழக்கடை அந்த ஸ்ட்ராங் வாட்டர் ட்ரெயின்லேயே வந்து சிவில் கன்ஸ்ட்ரக்ஷன் போட்டிருக்கிறாங்க அதையும் அதை அதை பிரேக் பண்ணுறதுக்கே ரொம்ப கஷ்டப்பட்டோம் இப்போ எனக்கு முன்னாடி கொஞ்சம் நாள் முன்னாடி பேசினார் ஒருத்தர் சொன்னார் ரீகிளாசிஃபிகேஷன் ஆஃப் லேண்ட் யூஸ் ஜோன் பற்றி பேசினார் சிஎம்டிஏல பற்றி அவர் சொல்லும்போது எனக்கு ஒரு சின்ன டவுட்டு ரீகிளாசிஃபிகேஷன் ஆஃப் லேண்ட் யூஸ் ஜோன் ஜோனுன்னா என்ன மீனிங் ஜோன்னா ஒரு பர்டிகுலர் ஏரியாவை பொறுத்து தான் ஜோனுன்னு சொல்ல முடியும் பட் இவங்க என்ன பண்ணுறாங்கன்னா ஒரு ஒரு பிளாட் ஒரு ஒரு இண்டிவிஜுவல் சைட்லையும் இவங்க வந்து ரீகிளாசிஃபை பண்ண அலோவ் பண்ணுறாங்க இதை எடுத்து நாங்கள் கேஸும் போட்டிருக்கோம் பல கேஸ் ஜட்மெண்ட் வந்தும் எங்களுக்கு வந்து ஃபேவரபுளாக வந்தும் கவர்மெண்ட் வந்து ஆக்ஷன் எடுக்க மாட்டேங்கிறாங்க அது என்ன பண்ணுறதுன்னு தெரியல ஐ திங்க் எங்களுடைய சஜஷன்ஸ் என்னென்னா எல்லா ரெசிடென்ஸ் வெல்ஃபேர் அசோசியேஷனும் ஒன்றா சேரணும் தேர் ஷுட் பி அ ஜாயிண்ட் ரெசிடென்ஷியல் வெல்ஃபேர் அசோசியேஷன் மீட்டிங் வேறு எவ்ரி இண்டிவிஜுவல் எவ்ரி எல்லாருமே ஒன்றா சேர்ந்து இதுக்கு ஒரு ஒரு ஃபைட் பண்ணாலே ஒய்ய இந்த பிரச்சனைக்கு எனக்கு தெரிஞ்ச சொல்யூஷன் கிடைக்காது மோர் ஓவர் இப்போ இருக்கக்கூடிய டிசிஆர் டெவலப்மெண்ட் கண்ட்ரோல் ரூ ரெகுலேஷன்ஸ் ஆஃப் சிஎம்டிஏ வேர் தே ஆர் ஸ்பெசிஃபை டூ எஃப்எஸ்ஐ இஸ் ரியலி டேஞ்சரஸ் ஃபார் த என்டையர் தமிழ்நாடு ஸோ அதை முதல்ல சேலஞ்ச் பண்ணி தான் ஆனோம் பட் இது எத்தனை பேர் வருவாங்க அப்படிங்கிறது எனக்கு ஐடியா இல்லாமல் இருக்கணும் தட்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் மை ஹேண்ட் Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and, and the experience share thuk, Mr. Kannan. Nah, unga board actually But you are right. You know, every one of us has to think about what is it. In fact, I want to invite our... Uh, and the board board uh, board uh, board uh, board uh, board board police station. நான் முடிய முடியாதுன்ட்டு எனக்கு என்ன தப்பு இருக்கு அந்த போர்டில் என்ன என்ன அரெஸ்ட் பண்ணால் அரெஸ்ட் பண்ணிக்கோங்க என்ன என்ன செக்ஷன் அரெஸ்ட் பண்ணால் அரெஸ்ட் பண்ணுன்னு நிற்கி கொள்ள வைங்க நான் போர்டு எடுக்க மாட்டேன் இன்னும் பத்து போர்டு பண்ணி வைப்பான்னு சொன்னேன் நாங்கள் இன்ஃபேக்ட் நான் பத்து போர்டு ரெடி பண்ணி வச்சிருக்கேன் இன்னும் but actually i want our writer kora kora ibrahim to uh, to share some of his experience i think ongala meet pannittu da i think he had taken some on the ground experiences in the last week of uh, of the flooding in uh, in nagar kora over to you actually, actually it was is another content from kamakoti apartment scene oh, is that right Nagar, sorry I, I, just, i thought it was the same mr kanjan mm. right, right even i thought this is so so what what i would like to speak on like initially i was going to talk about all the reports that we have done over the last citizen matters have done over the last four years about floodings but then ganga had done a brilliant presentation about about everything that i don't have to now go over it again so but then something since uh, since uh, da- david is here and since they, i've been speaking to david as well since kanan from tinagar and i think even dayan and krishnan Uh, is joining us uh, today he is one of the founders of chitlapak chitlapakam rising an ngo from chitlapakam uh, so one of the things that uh, citizen matters have found out over the years is especially regarding chitlapakam is the overflowing of the selio lake uh, which is causing the which, which has been which has been the uh, reason for flooding this time around because i spoke to david Uh, a couple of hours back and he was saying this time also even though the intensity of flooding flooding has reduced for example uh, in the past if it used to take around 5 to 6 days of water logging now it has come down to maybe around 2 or 3 days so so there is that that difference is there but the reasons for flooding in chitlapakam still remains the same that is one of them is overflowing of chitlapakam i mean sorry overflowing of selio lake and uh, the chitlapakam lake and now that like mr kanan had pointed out i had visited dinagar uh, a couple of days back and the prominent question that residents are asking is what is what was the smart city project all about uh, because as as far as reports are concerned 200 crores were spent as part of the smart city project in tinagar where 
120 crores were spent for stormwater drainage and around 80 crores were spent for the Mamblam Canal. Now, I, when I spoke to the MLA, MLA of Tinaga constituency, Jay Kanadadi, he was saying that for, for the initial two, three days after the rain started, they were trying to go from one street to another to find out where the what logging is because in some, some in some areas near the Mamblam near the Mamblam station, despite despite pumping out water, there was still water logging happening, and then they found out that it was because the debris it was because the debris that has been dumped into the Mamblam Canal as part of the restoration work. And now what was the restoration work that is happening in Mamblam Canal? The restoration work was they were planning on building an over, overhead top over the Mamblam Canal uh, to prevent a dumping of garbage into the into the canal. So that restoration work has actually caused a dumping, uh, has actually caused a blockage in Mambaram Canal, re resulting in a prevention of water. I think Kanan want, Mr. Kanan wants to interrupt. He was raising a uh, hand. So in Pandey Bazaar, sure, sure. in, sure. in the Smart City project, there was no coordination between the electricity board. There is no coordination between the sewer water uh, water water drainage system with the uh, telephone department. There was no coordination to anybody. The, the party who did the job gave a design and it was done implemented. There was no coordination between in, in, between the intergovernment departments. Uh, I am going to bring, bring out this report in another two months time. I am waiting for the reply of my RTAs which will come. First thing. Second thing one day, MLA la worst thing. You, you tell me, I am telling you, Tinagar MLA MP are good for makeup. In the Tinagar one day, why didn't you mala wali? Mar you galang ano siya show kaat tuna like mo. They don't stand on fields. Karna ani di argotong, MP argotong. They don't understand the real problem. Even if they understand the real problem, they will not even accept it. Then encroachment thing are done. You rangana street then sarana store laaram mo si. Everybody encroaches. Everybody knows the street width that to parna. You are you take the street width with the corporation. And the corporation the paray street width ipo illa. Yella Adam is being encroached. Okay. Okay. So so that was actually so there were two things. I mean, we we actually spoke, we spoke a lot about stormwater drains and we spoke about the Mambalam Canal as well. The other thing, I mean, there was also another side where residents are saying, I mean, we cannot blame the corporation and the government. I mean, they have their responsibilities which they need to do. The, one of the things that are the citizens doing their part because one of the reasons was that drainage, I mean, uh, Tinaga is like a very commercial area and the drain, it was found, found that the drainage systems and stormwater drains were clogged with plastic materials, with cardboard materials and which, and, and, and all other, all other kind of human waste that, that, that resulted in clogging of the drains, which is why water. So the question still asks is that, are, are the citizens also doing their part? So that is another question that arised out of this whole Tinaga issue. So, so that and this has been happening for like I think the last six to seven years, the same thing has been happening. So from we have a panel of experts here, we have citizens, we have so we would we would like to know more about how why, why is this continuing to happen, and is there is there like a solution to this in the years? I mean, in the years to come. Because we anyway know that rains are not going to stop, so it's just going to continue. So I'd like to take this back to Meenakshi and the panelists to take it forward. Uh, yeah. Can I interrupt here? Can I interrupt here? Yes, David. Yes. I was only I was only going to ask Kripa one question before she left because she has to sign off. Then I'll jump yeah. right back to you. Yeah. Yeah, okay? yeah. Let her finish. Let us okay. finish. Kripa, everybody yeah. else was talking about making things better and working to make sure the water goes away, etc. You were the one who said, learn to live with the floods. <laughs> so tell me, what, what can we do to learn to live with these floods? I mean, uh, whatever was your thought when you said that, and is it going to be worse? Is it going to be somewhat better? Uh, is it really a beyond a point of no return? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, all of us have lofty ideas of what the future should look like, but we live in the present. And so we have to be prepared for what is going to happen to us. And so I met her in the aftermath of my book coming out, I met a climate scientist who asked me to take out a map. And then he is in Colombia and the US. He asked me to take out a map and then he asked me to show him where my parents live. 
and his answer point blank was ask them to move uh, because you know if you're going to live anywhere close to a sort of a water body uh, and we are looking at a world that is increasingly changing because of climate change and, and global warming and, and unpredictable weather events. Uh, one of the things that you will have to do is to see where your house is. A lot of people don't have the privilege of doing that. Those who do will move. They will go to higher places. They, they will build their homes in a way that the water can just pass through. So this is why, uh, you know, at the government level, perhaps the intervention should be for the marginalized because they are the ones who have no choice. Right. The rest of us, the rest of us have the resources at least to sort of protect ourselves. Um, but in terms of what can we do to live with this is to first of all, like a lot of these admirable citizens here are doing, which is to just sort of understand where you live. Uh, you know, because it's not just it's not just a question of being a being a good citizen anymore. It's a question of, uh, you know, safeguarding like the physical body of the people you love. Uh, you know, that is where it has come to, especially with 2015 floods, so many people got just washed away. So the first thing would be to, I would say, ask hard questions before you decide where you're going to live or, or what, what you're going to do if you can. And the other thing about learning to live with the rains is also then investing, you know, and asking of the elected representatives and everybody who's a stakeholder to invest in what is required to live with these things, uh, to not allow them to do what they've done to the storm water drains. I live in Tinagatu, I live off GHG Road, which is, you can imagine is a nightmare. Uh, and in fact, the where we are on GHG Road used to be what is called long tank. And, uh, you know, we live in a tank basically whenever it rains now. So. The basic understanding of all of this might help. And then you could maybe bring in some engineers and see what you can do. But a lot of the work that needs to be done has to be done at the administrational level. It's not something you and I, global change, global warming and climate change is not something you and I as citizens can just combat on our own. It requires really broad vision and it requires policy and it, and it requires you know people to take it very seriously. And, and I hope I really hope that they do, uh, they are taking it seriously because they're making all the right noises uh, in all the news channels right. <laughs> when they come to speak uh, in good English, but I don't know what they're going to actually end up doing. Uh, I hope there is some good policy in place. Thanks, thanks Kripa. That is, uh, that is uh, uh, positive yet sobering at the same time. So thank you, thank you for that. David, yeah, happy to come back to you. You had something to add there. Sorry if I broke uh, the train of thought. Uh, Mr. Kannan on the Solimdari, coordination between departments. That's a very important point. What I feel is every ward or every zone of cooperation should have a coordination officer. Now, if I'm at Crompet, it comes under Pallavaram Municipality. In uh, order major work on the government level work, uh, I coordinate with different officials. Kapra uh, Palavra Municipality Commissioner Room La Bay Ukande, Napona Porte, AD Highways or D Highways of Pona Porte in the issue is that in a pacing, the clear Ponaga and the lighting in line there. Abdin. Other Kapra or Erthla and the restricted subway. Other one the water Epopatan or Pulla Tanirko. Uh, municipality get a Anglican or the we don't have any control over that. Highways get up, we don't have any control. Finally, I had to tweet to the DRM railways asking him what is this. He said, uh, it is the local body which should look into it. I am tweet for the written tweet for the municipality commissioner who what's up, let's say, if the children have been screenshot at Tang and our one hour or one solar. Finally, our national will they give a written uh, letter? Uh, we'll take control. Adi yanga pota. Apro patinal kalchi commissioner called me and said, sir, I have got the return letter. Put it tanga. Ippa maanga got the clear pani ron. So it, it is the coordination between different departments which is lacking. Adar alda mogor tar vande road potu pona onna inor tar thondraanga. Last week there was an accident, uh, fatal accident on Mount Road at uh, Chinnamalai. 
where uh, the highways department the next day said that uh, the place was dug up by a private telecom operator. So our private telecom operator known to our eco highways again the they didn't give permission for Ranga. Up for permission could occur the permission and occur the in the Marie Marie correspondence between different departments is not happening. I have personally read one department to keep municipality and gang a lack lacking are the though. நீங்க வந்து ரிட்டர்னா கொடுங்கன்னு ரிட்டர்னா கொடுக்க வச்சு நான் அந்த ஆர்டிஐ போட்டு அந்த ரிட்டர்ன் காப்பி எல்லாம் வாங்கியிருக்கேன் இப்படி ஸோ த ஸ்குவாடினேஷன் பிட்வீன் டிபார்ட்மெண்ட்ஸ் இஸ் நில் இன் தமிழ்நாடு எஸ் புட் மீ மை வீடியோ இஸ் ஆஃப் கேன் யூ சுவிச் இட் ஆன் மை வீடியோ த ஹோஸ்ட் இஸ் சுவிட் ஆஃப் மை வீடியோ ஐ குடன் எக்ஸ்பிரஸ் மை தாட்ஸ் ஐ குடன் எக்ஸ்பிரஸ் மை ஆன்சர்ஸ் டு தெம் யூ நோ வென் ஐ லிசன் டு தெம் we'll we'll just if you can type your questions in the box please or we'll come to you in a round we're just taking some questions uh, you, uh, in between i want to say something uh, regarding that matter which uh, now uh, david manohar uh, said about the in between or office and in your office the connection illa correspondent illa and the pathi naan yeah so tell us yeah evlo vandu we suffered uh, coordinating them i live in the same street where ganga is living okay and uh, we had a problem with uh, when uh, the new line was laying with the, each uh, department uh, you know she said na uh, eb department and the sewage department and the metro department as manogar said there is no in between connection when i go there they send me here when i go there they send me to the other place and letters from everywhere i have to bring and uh, so many issues uh, we have faced when we are we were doing that today we enjoyed this uh, this by uh, rain we enjoyed but with a lot of difficulties and in the future somewhere else somebody want to do the same thing in their area they should not face the same problem so only i am saying the the interconnection is not at all good they are just chasing us they are just chasing it from one department to the another department even though we go to mla we know mla nadrajan and belu everybody we know we bring them to our street we take them for a walk we tell them everything but it's thank not you. happening thank you yeah thank you we are obviously we are going to write about all the comments that citizens have shared with us on this uh on this uh, zoom call so thank you for that that is definitely coming out as a very important point that the coordination and inter excuse me ma'am excuse yeah. me so uh, like us people won't come again to work and do something good to the society because we are chased from the officers and they are not responding to us go there go here and we'll put us off and we'll sit at home again we don't go oh nothing will happen nothing will happen we'll be sitting we don't want to do that we want to no, struggle no, no. and, sure, sure. and get it done you know thank you yeah ஜிஸ்ரிஸ் <laughs> <laughs> so what are your thoughts is it even is it a point of no return are we going to be able to recreate some of those drains have you any visibility into our disaster planning uh, uh, by the authorities would you have any idea of that raj so no i have been very pessimistic about uh, this one like whether we would be able to solve it is something that i have been pessimistic some things that others have been talking about uh, but uh, which i had written also is uh, you know see the technical issues are one number one is technical issues but why has the technical issues not have been you know it is not been taking place right so i mean the solutions towards it um, why it is not happening because you have a problem with municipal governance now when i say municipal governance uh, people are talking about coordination see uh, uh, it is i, I don't feel that um, uh, there should be this kind of uh, external to uh, coordination and uh, those kind of things should not be there the thing is the government setup should have been even more uh, uh, you know better what we have right now for chennai this is this applies for every city in india right now and you have created n number of parastatals which are elected by uh, you know undemocratically i mean which is being run by undemocratic uh, uh, process that is you have some ias officers so you have some bureaucrats running it uh, or the latest being the smart cities limited 
all these are running a parallel government and bypassing the actual process right so that is the reason that why it is not happening that is why i am very pessimistic about it with respect to the technical possibility of it uh, yes it is possible uh, in uh, but it will take a lot of time like uh, what i what uh, ganga was presenting the other time that is what i have been recommending for everyone uh, in the sense for the government in the sense like you need to do an audit what is happening to your drain what is happening to the topography uh, what is done in a small level over there is something that has to be done properly and this can avoid a good majority of it and uh, we have to uh, we have to think about uh, that one first that is the most critical part and that requires lots of financing as well i mean it's not just diesel thing in many places you don't have the drains itself the road design is not uh, uh, you know up to mark that is the storm water drains uh, networks are not proper you might have drain drains in your street in a in a uh, you know a, a more uh, a privileged neighborhood you are likely to have a drain but the network is still not there um, that is you need to uh, like a uh, i mean how you see a river in a watershed map you need to have a artificial river network which is not there that network is completely absent you have bits and pieces of it over here and there now that if you sort it yes we can avoid a good majority of it but uh, still we have lots of concrete uh, everywhere particularly it will be a problem in um, you know places where there has been encroachments on over the natural water bodies not on, not on the artificial water bodies but on the natural water bodies like pallikarne or flood plains of adair and goa now in these cases you need to have a real long term plan you need to understand the, uh, the lock in period that has been there like a good majority of it is uh, like i mean there, there is a good number of it which is is done by government right so you need to have you need to understand those uh, investments that have been made we have to be care careful about uh, uh, the social setup socio economic setup of uh, who is encroaching or who is uh, squatting in that place and then create a long term plan uh, for those areas around those would be the last to suffer uh, i mean that is the i mean if you sort out the storm water drain network those uh, natural uh, water bodies people who are living in natural water bodies will be the last to suffer and for them you can build new gray infra gray infrastructure to avoid it now if you do that it is going to be uh, if it can happen but uh, see as long as you are having a uh, unelected leadership that is going to run everything if it is not going to be run by a, a democratic process if it is not going to be in a more accountable process uh, then there is no way that this is going to happen we will be complaining about it the next uh, round of complaints will be on the drought that is going to come and uh, we'll be doing that the reason being is that you don't have any say to cmwssp you don't have anything to say to same day their salaries their uh, their livelihood is not dependent on you or i mean whatever complaints you can have about mlas and councillors still at some point of time they come back to you right and you don't have a councillor set up right now in chennai um, or any part of tamil nadu for that matter uh, the urban uh, elections have not happened but uh, if you don't have that uh, chain which is uh, from people to government and then government to people if it is not there then you won't be able to expect any of these results uh, there might be small bits of pieces of solutions happening here happening there and uh, through uh, as i said like uh, uh, influencing opinions and uh, everything around that that can be done only by a handful of people who can uh, who can afford the time who can afford the effort and uh, this is not going to be very inclusive solution in the long term right so that is why we need to have the democratic setup uh, right in place so first thing is if you put the municipal governance bills in place you might have uh, uh, this solved by like say 20 years or 30 years uh, where you bring all the planning agencies all the transport agencies all the uh, water related metro water i mean whether it is the sub water supply the uh, sewage water or the drain uh, storm water drain everything under an elected official and empowered mayor and uh, that is how it should be and that if you do that there is a possibility that this could be solved within 10 20 years and then the engineering solutions how i engineering and the financial solutions if you find some kind of an innovative method then maybe we can reduce that time period to 5 years or something but uh, without that it is not going to happen that is my um, uh, opinion but anyway we are will be heading to a uh, we'll be heading to drought right now i mean sooner or later we'll be talking oh dear about okay um, <laughs> oh dear that is a sobering thought on which you have uh, ended your uh, saying <laughs> thank you raj thank you i had a note from my friend harsha a few minutes ago he wanted to add a quick rejoinder to ganga's uh, uh, note about interacting with authorities to plan harsha are you there yeah i'm here yes can you see me yes yes i can okay uh, uh, very interesting uh, meet uh, today uh, meenakshi uh, 
Raj said, uh, you know, elected leaders, uh, elected uh, leaders are the only way out of this. Let me give you an experience that I had a few years ago while uh, interacting with elected leaders. This is the time when we had counselors and all that, you know. So this uh, street in OMR, uh, just off OMR called Wipro Street used to get flooded with water. So we went and met the counselor at that time. I think it was Leo Subram was the counselor. We met him and we said, sir, this is the water, it's flooding here, all that. So what do we do? He said, Tambi, enna pannu, plan sollunga, enna pannu sollunga, pannu So like a fool, I went, I measured the height, weight, distance, everything, all, uh, you know, altitude, attitude, everything. And uh, that's the, you know, put a complete map of it and said the water slopes like this, this is how it goes. So this is where we need the thing. We need a pump here. We need to pump to the main channels and this and that. He saw all this, you know, this, this whole process took me a couple of months to measure all this. I put this together when met him. And when I called him, he said, uh, panna, street lane vote vote so, no. so do we depend on the bureaucrats who just do it for the salary? Do we depend on the uh, elected representatives who do it just for the votes? I don't know. Everybody yeah. wants something in return. Nobody wants to do anything for anybody. Ashish, Though you're paying I... your taxes, nothing works. Shall I add from the other side? Uh, one <laughs> example for me. Yeah, sure. Uh, two issues right now. So presently, I'm handling in my hometown, which is Nagarkoy. And uh, we have a, you know, very progressive uh, electric, I mean, uh, IAS officer who is heading the corporation commission. Okay, he's, he's the corporation commissioner. And there are two issues. One is that a garbage incinerator has been being placed next to a school, in a next to a school and next to a college. It's like in between two of them. And uh, on the other side, uh, you have a road which has not been worked for the last seven years. Now, uh, when I go and complain over there, I mean, the last time I had a counselor, he did something. He did something, whether he was able to do it or not, he was able to do something. And at least he was, basic thing was he was polite uh, because he knew that he, there was some kind of a control that I had over him. Now, what did the commissioner say to me is that, shall I dump that garbage in front of your house? Where will I put it? Now, who is going to say no to it? I mean, uh, is her salary dependent on my, my grievances? No, it is not. See, these people have just passed an examination. This is a structural problem. These people have just passed an examination. You can't expect governance from a person who is uh, whose accountability is not, uh, not dependent on people, but is dependent on an exam that they have passed 20 years ago, 30 years ago through, to, through their privilege. Now, that is a structural problem. If you don't solve it with, uh, you know, re like uh, recurring elections, like three years or four years, reduce the term of uh, corporations. Unless you do that, it is not going to work. At least I had some accountability when the previous councillor was there. Now with the current one, there is nothing. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm nobody. There is, they don't care about it. That's my, uh, I mean, this is happening everywhere. Everywhere you go and talk to AE, everywhere you talk to commissioners, you talk to CMWSSP, CMDA, uh, you talk to uh, CMRL, you talk to uh, the Smart Cities Limited, all these are IAS offices and a few privileged people can access them, but rest of them we will not be able to. That is the that is my thought. That's that's a, I shortened it. Sorry, um, and I interrupted. Sorry. Anyway, please go. Ahead. I I understand your thoughts, Raj. Uh, just sharing my experiences. A uh, little uh, two points that I wanted to add here that uh, we bypassed uh, this whole thing with uh, depending on the corporation or the counselors or anybody, and we took a private initiative. Since uh, Wipro had an office at the end of the street, we worked with Wipro, uh, dug the channels through Wipro's property and connected it to the Palikarnai Marsh. So our problem was solved. It's not how we got it done. Uh, not like Ganga, we didn't do a whole uh, network and uh, RTIs and you know take David's help and uh, do all that. And one interesting thing I saw Ganga on uh, your uh, presentation was that few of your streets didn't have stormwater drains, right? So we face that a lot in OMR. When we go to CMWSSB and talk to them, they say that there are no stormwater drains or no stormwater drains planned for these streets. That's because these are non-planned streets. Mm -hmm. So it's not like these streets are illegal, but they are not part of the plan to lay stormwater drains uh, currently. So they have to wait for the third master plan or fourth master plan or whatever. So uh, we have shifted our focus in trying to solve this issue at the bottom. And we have st uh, started concentrating on uh, solving the issue from the top. 
So right now, uh, FOMRA, the Federation of OMR Resident Associations, is working on influencing planning. So we are going right to the state planning commission level and CMW, uh, CMDA and other bodies like that and starting to influence plan. So what is your plan for the next five years? Let's forget about what is there right now. Next, uh, next rain will get flooded. All that natural things will happen. Whatever you do, it will anyway happen. So don't cry about today. So we are concentrating on, uh, you know, going ahead and doing all that. Uh, thinking about five years, 10 years from now, or trying to influence the uh, planning commission level. Now, so few of us have got in, been invited into the uh, water augmentation policy uh, of uh, state planning commission, just because of the experience we've had in doing all this work, not because we are some IAS officer or, you know, we studied for it, but just because we've struggled and we've found some solutions and we've done some things. So that's a nice part. Uh, I don't know how long that will last or how implementable this will become. But it's a start from where we were a uh, few years ago. Uh, yes, thankfully, all the RWAs on uh, OMR have started rainwater harvesting in a very earnest way. And this has helped a large amount of the flooding to be reduced. Uh, there are only a few pockets. And when I know that those streets are, uh, you know, flooded in OMR, I know why they're flooded because those RWAs were just sleeping when we spoke about rainwater harvesting and, you know, tapping the potential of rain and collecting the water and, you know, all that. So uh, 2015 was a good wake up call. 2019 was the worst wake up call with your uh, 1819, the drought and all that. So hopefully another bang on the head will be this uh, 2021. Right. I always say there may be rules, there may be so many things to do, but, uh, you know, like helmets, you don't wear a helmet till you fall down, hit your head. And then you say from next day, you'll start wearing your helmet. So 2015 was one knock on the head. 2018, 19 was another knock on the head. 2021 is a third knock on the head. Beyond this, if you're not going to wear your helmet, which is basically do your rainwater harvesting and all that, you don't deserve to die. You might as well just, you know, get washed away. Uh, thanks, Meenakshi, for letting me talk. Uh, I'll, I'll let you get back to you. Thank you, Harsha. You actually gave us the idea for our next webinar, which is going to be on the master plan and how citizens can contribute and how we can actually... No, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. We have to, like you said, we have to now jump into what we can do as opposed to worrying about what has happened. Uh, Dayanand, I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. Please. Yeah. No problem. No. This is like... Uh, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? There is some voices from the background, but yes, we can hear you. Yeah, one minute. One minute. See, uh, in Chitla Pakam, yeah. uh, you have seen the flooding scenario, and every news article used to see Chitla Pakam getting flooded because of uh, Selio Lake uh, surplus. So, the issue is we'd like to have the lakes with us, and uh, we also wanted to mitigate the flooding. As you see in Chennai city, there is some local flooding or sometimes the surge from the channels itself floods Tinagar area or KK Nagar, there is a surge in channel. Whereas in Chitlapatam, we very well know we have upstream lakes and downstream lakes uh, and the upstream lake is definitely contributing to the flooding. We analyzed after 2015, we took it very serious. And we analyzed in uh, various aspects, we uh, understood the gradient of the uh, lake and its bed and totally up to this uh, Palikarnai marsh. First, we analyzed it up to Sembakam Lake, our downstream lake. So immediately we came up with a plan telling with the PWD and the higher authorities asking to construct a big drain, a macro kind of drain, which could handle the surplus because the existing channel was either blocked or halfway left. It was not completely connecting to the downstream lakes. So immediately, uh, can I just sh share a screen? See, uh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, now, uh, can you see this screen? Yeah. Yeah. And now, if you see, this is Selior Lake. So from the Selior Lake, the surplus channel just comes comes here, and halfway it gets terminated, and it floods the complete uh, southern Chitral Park. So this was put forward to the officials and immediately they started constructing a cut and cover drain to link uh, this uh, surplus. They drained it into this pond and from here they built a cut and cover drain to Sempaka. 
this was a partial relief and uh, in 2021 since this from this point start point to this point there is no link there is escape of water which the flooding is continuing for us and there is also some escape from chitlapakam lake that is also flooding but the main scenario uh, what we have uh, now realized is like this is the full map of lakes connected lakes from seleyu to pallikarni marsh if you see there are around 10 lakes which are all interconnected to each other only this uh, satellite imagery what you are seeing is taken on june 2020 the only lake which is dry is chitlapakam lake this happened because of uh, our uh, continuous uh, pressure we put on the government telling that we don't want to take sewage into a water body so the water body was uh, this uh, sewage was completely deflected we asked them to go for uh, using a system in such a way a collection mill is installed and take all the sewage to the uh, stp so immediately the pwd accepted that and they deflected the sewage and after deflection this is the condition of chitlapakam lake which is a water body completely dry and once it was dry they deepened and desilted and today the chitlapakam lake there is no surplus escape even after the 23 centimeter rainfall of the recent rains and still we have a water storage of around uh, one feet in the lake Whereas, if you could see the, all the other lakes downstream, Seleyo, Sembakam, Nanmangalam, and uh, Rajakil Pakam, Kiel Katalai, Kupilam Bakam, Narayanaburam, and up to this Narayanaburam, you will see all the lakes filled with sewage. So, the main reason for the flooding in this southern sector in our areas is sewage uh, letting into the lakes continuously for 365 days, killing the water storage. Uh, has put us under a severe flood threat. So until this is getting addressed properly, and if there is a proper catchment study done by the government, for every lake there is a rainfall catchment area, and based on that, this is all urban lakes. Whatever you are seeing is the urban lake. And if you see the uh, MSL, this is, uh, Seleur is at 26 meter MSL, whereas if you see the last lake, uh, Narayanaburam is just Three meter above MSL, the mean sea level. So it's the uh, most low lying area. If you keep on letting sewage, and even there is a small rain, this area, Kovilam Bakam and this Narayanaburam, are totally getting very severely affected. High inundation area it becomes. So our point of view is we are representing it to the government, asking to stop sewage letting into these water bodies. So uh, the flooding will be definitely considerably reduced as our uh, lakes can be improved, the storage can be improved for 40 to 30 centimeter rainfall holding capacity. This is what we are uh, very much uh, telling Madam. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. And as my colleague uh, Mira has just commented on the box, it's absolutely fascinating to see the issues and how, you know, it connects from the hyperlocal the, to the larger macro level. I mean, every day we learn so much at Citizen Matters here. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Madam, can I enter? Meera had a question. Uh, David, yeah. Bhuvana yeah. has a question for you. So it was coming to you only. Bhuvana, yeah. you had a question for David. You want to ask that so we can combine it and go back to David? Uh, hello. Where is Bhuvana? I saw her. Yeah, I'm here, uh, uh, Meenakshi. Yeah, Konjo, you'll need to increase your volume a little bit, please. Uh, is it okay now? Yeah, better. Yeah. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, uh, hello to everyone. Uh, I'm from uh, Talambur, actually. Uh, behind uh, OMR, basically. Uh, there's a very big problem here, enormous problem here, uh, because last year in 2020, when we had two cyclones, Nivar and Burevi, our area was flooded and we were marooned for 20 plus days. When the entire city was, uh, uh, was in very normal, uh, we were marooned for 20 plus days. We were able to use only uh, high vehicle, uh, race vehicles like lorry or uh, a JCB or a tractor to commute to the main road. The main road is OMR, that's the IT corridor, which is only 1.5 kilometers from my apartment. Uh, luckily, water did not enter my apartment, so we were able to manage inside. But uh, there is a there are a few other communities like Elim Nahar and Jawahar Nahar of uh, Chennai Corporation. They are Chennai Corporation and we are in Talambur uh, Panchayat of Chengalpattu district. So they had chest uh, high water. They were waiting for chest high waters. Most of them had been moved to different uh, relief centers. 
but authorities did not help us last year this time we got help a uh, lot of help but still the same problem has repeated though our area has received lesser rainfall compared to the city i think it's only a 15 cm or something compared to the city uh, 20 plus 20 it was i think uh, so but what still, is the question uh, guna yeah you said you had a question yeah, for i me. have a question okay uh, ah. my question is like we citizens started investigating the problems uh, after last year uh, we found out that there is a carrier canal called ottiyam bakam odai okay it's a huge carrier canal which carries around 25 to 30 lake waters uh, water surplus water uh, even from bandalur bandalur agaram ten uh, uh, madam bakam a uh, lot of lakes arasan kalni 20 30, 25 30 lakes uh, this canal is a carrier canal which carries all this water to the um, uh, Perimbakam marsh. There's only one exit point here, which is in the, um, okay, okay. Uh, there's only one uh, exit point on the Nukambalem link road and the government had also started widening the bridge there. Uh, my question is like, uh, this, uh, they have found, the PW officials have found the missing canal link there. And still, they are not able to uh, come to any different uh, any solution to this problem. Uh, the easiest solution will be to take this canal uh, directly to the east side, directly to the Buckingham Canal. Instead, they are taking the water through the normal course, means the entire water has to cross the Perimbakam Marsh, after then the Pallikarne Marsh, and join the Otium uh, uh, Madhu, and then reach Buckingham Canal. Thus, till then, Till then, uh, we all have to wait. All the residents of this part of uh, uh, Talambur or Semanjeri have to wait till the upper stream water is getting uh, uh, drained and then we have to wait for this water to get pumped out. Uh, my question to David is like, what do we do with these um, missing canal links? So our, my, this canal is almost two kilometers away from my house. We never expected such canals to overflow and uh, flood our area. Uh, my question is, uh, how do we get this problem rectified? Uh, as common citizens, we are able to see the root cause of the problem. The officials are not able to find out anything. They always give us different answers. Uh, they don't do even uh, look, uh, what to say, declog the culverts, existing culverts. Uh, they don't uh, bring, uh, if, if they find out some private property is blocking the way, uh, they're not able to cross the property and take the canal. Uh, I mean, even the Green Tribunal has asked the government for uh, this problem. OTM Bakam Canal is blocked. Uh, it's asked the government for answers. They have not uh, given any answers. So, so, David, I think the question is, is there any way to retrieve yeah, these canals? Uh, there, are, there are ways. We have to fight it out. Summa Vitlau can't blind us or not, they won't accept. So, file RTAs, find out uh, where the canal goes. Revenue Department, PWD, FMB plus sketch, all Mangi, Namaukand work out Pane in the canal when in the Adatla Pode, in the building line, in the compound Lapoy Mukta De, is Alang Kandapudice, either one the fight out Pane in the encroachment Sedaka Soli, other than that's what I said, rerouting of canals, canals getting inside big uh, the complexes, residential gateway communities, either a problem than our model sonna, either way. Then I don't do for Bona, uh, madam. Actually, petition for one year, Madam, one minute. Uvna, I will minute. connect you one on one. I think we want to let him address the larger issue. Ah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. ah. Madam, in the in the Idla on there, we have this uh, Buckingham Canal, which is man made, which runs from the uh, north to south and uh, into the Bay of Bengal, Muttagadla, Buckingham Canal. In the Buckingham Canal, the planning is very poor. Buckingham Canal is the MRTS. That's the total width. Of the, they have shortened it now. But the GCC is making parks, children's play space at Indranaga inside the Buckingham Canal. So the water spread, flood water's carrying capacity is brought down. This is a major issue. Uh, throughout Buckingham Canal, MRTS runs in the problem. Then I think we should have a big master plan where we should have a big canal, huge canal from west to east on the suburbs, connecting the three districts, Tiruvallur, Kanjipuram, and uh, Chengalpad, and uh, 
the outlet flowing somewhere near uh, Mahavalipuram. So I think that will be a best idea to get this floodwaters out of the suburban areas and also from the city because most of the tanks are situated in the three districts on the suburbs between uh, Tambaram and uh, Sengalpat district. Uh, yeah, Sengalpat. Ah, okay. Thank you. Thank you, David, for that. Of course, I know. So I was just going to say that we have uh, we have a lot of questions on the chat box. At some point, I will, uh, I mean, I'm happy for us to go on a little bit if there are questions. But if our panelists have other commitments, they can uh, leave in a couple of minutes. Uh, they, we have two more requests to share. I'm going to ask Sridhar to unmute. And he has said that he has three, four points that have not been raised so far. So Sridhar, we're very curious to hear these points. Okay, are you hearing me? Yes, yes. Okay, um, I think uh, a lot of the points re uh, relate to uh, a micro level situation of what our floods are. Okay. So when you uh, take uh, resident welfare associations and all that stuff, they, they can plan around that particular area. But what is needed is a macro level perspective. Uh, and when you, uh, um, uh, when we listen to Raj, I think it was Raj who mentioned about the flow of water that needs to be um, uh, regulated in a proper way. So we have uh, three rivers, Kosastalayar, Kuam, and Adayar, and the Buckingham Canal that connects uh, all three. If you go back to 2015, and you, uh, uh, you must have heard about R.A. Puram flooded. Okay, why was it flooded? Because all the water came from, uh, I think, the Adayar into, uh, towards uh, um, Kuam. Uh, it broke the walls uh, over there. I did not, uh, I, I just live uh, 100 meters from the canal. I did not see any water coming from that side. Uh, the reason, Mandavali is built right on top of the Makayam Canal. And another station, which is uh, Thiruvalikini, it is also encroach, uh, it is built, uh, probably 75% is built on the canal. So when you have such a structure like Buckingham Canal, which is literally uh, blocking the flow, and a lot of sewage also flows into this particular thing, you've lost the whole usefulness of the Buckingham Canal. Whether we can, uh, we can go back to uh, pre-1990 or something when uh, MRT has built it, no, <laughs> we cannot. Um, so uh, we need to uh, really look at the macro level perspective of how we really take the uh, floodwaters into whichever canals that are available. And of course, uh, we heard the problems with respect to Mamalam Canal and that, but Buckingham Canal is a critical part of uh, uh, diverting all the floodwaters into it whenever the situation demands. And, and that was one particular point where uh, um, uh, I, I wanted to highlight. Um, we were talking about, uh, so I, I've been in technology uh, uh, um, quite some time back. Uh, I, I knew the difference between a technical manager and a project manager. And we have only project managers in the corporation. I don't think that there are technical engineers uh, uh, in, in the corporation. Um, I, I would like to uh, at least know from others whether there is a, uh, whether the water, whatever the corporation calls as engineer or whatever the metro water calls as engineer, are they really an engineer? So what is their expertise in trying to really figure out a solution and actually uh, drive a solution to completion whenever we bring a problem? And, and that goes all the way until the top. Uh, th there are no uh, domain experts or technical experts uh, who are really uh, doing the plans um, unless someone ha has a differing opinion. And whoever is uh, uh, head of the Smart, uh, Smart City Limited, uh, Raj Churubal, he was a consultant to the corporation before. And, and whoever is designing uh, the solutions, uh, ITDP, they were, consult, uh, they, they were actually the contractors for the uh, corporation before. So we, we have, uh, um, and the Smart City is not really uh, regulated uh, in the state. It is a central government uh, established uh, corporation. All the funding comes from there. Um, so we, we have a basic problem where there is no accountability to the state or to the citizens on whatever is being done, uh, whether it is a corporation, whether it is a smart city limited, whether it is anybody else. Um, so that, that particular accountability has to be driven. And what could drive that accountability? Publishing of relevant technical information, maps. We don't really, uh, uh, of course, Ganga Sridhar showed a map of uh, the SWD uh, uh, in that particular area. 
do we have any maps that is published for any of the other uh, areas we, uh, uh, ultimately it is only the uh, the power that R rwa is hold that actually control whatever information uh, that they get and unfortunately a lot of the areas are not really served by rwas which are really united tnagar is one classic example where they really fight it out but unfortunately there is no unity uh, uh, among the residents over there so wherever that you find uh, that the rwas are powerful things get done and uh, let me go back uh, kapali and uh, chitragulam tank uh, ganga sri was mentioning that kapali tank is full it is not it, it is not even 25% full um, uh, in uh, 2015 it was full chitragulam was not really full uh, there had been works done in the chitragulam tank in the last one or two years that actually uh, enabled all the water inlets uh, to really be functional what ha what happened to the kapali tank we don't really know whether it is the bore wells around the tank that actually uh, suck up all the water or whether uh, rw structures uh, that actually were implemented uh, uh, in all over uh, mylapur whether they, they they actually took away all the water that was destined for the um, kapali tank we, we don't really know uh, but, but the thing is uh, my street does not have a storm water drain it is a natural incline which was actually there 100 years back and it still remains so uh, wherever the corporation feels that's a na natural incline uh, they may not really st build a storm water drain and that goes back to uh, um, one of the points that i wanted to really mention raising of road levels yeah. and ganga shridha was mentioning about road sloping from uh, rk mat road towards uh, their area it is not exactly sloping RK Mat Road has been uh, raised several times. That is why the RK Mat Road uh, uh, is at a higher level than other roads. And the same case with Saint Mary's Road, the same case with uh, Venkata Krishna Road. Um, uh, you must have seen Jet, uh, photos of Jet Nagar. Jet Nagar is an island among all the raised roads, which are the responsibility of BRR, uh, bus route roads. The bus route roads never bothers about raising the uh, road levels. leaving the, the uh, areas within it uh, as an island so th is, there are hundreds hundreds of islands that exist yeah, in the city yeah. because of road level raises and that is a major point uh, that arapur took up uh, in terms of milling the road and all that stuff and that improve it, it is improving the situation but we cannot really go back to uh, uh, the same situation that existed before where uh, the road levels uh, were uh, uh, much uh, less than what it is now thank you thanks thanks sri that i was going to say that uh, you know this conversation has thrown up for us so many potential topics for further discussion for engagement with citizens you know i have um, uh, we had a chimira and i were having a chat and she was saying can we ask if the corporation has hydrologists specific structural engineers see so that's exactly the point that you're raising that where is the technical expertise that is supposed to be designing these things for us the point that you raise that a, a that a person with knowledge of hydraulics would look at a street and say okay here is a slope the street doesn't need an swd as opposed to you know so thank you so much all of you for raising these very important points um i know that we are just pushing the clock here my friend bala is here bala you wanted to share something i know you have lots of stories from taksra we'll end on that note if you can quickly tell us in 2 minutes what it is that you wanted to share with us hi thanks a lot for the time I just want to sum up i have been hearing uh, you know from all the experts from different uh, on different areas i think the in a nutshell uh, we have to understand that chennai or tamil nadu is not singapore or U is not united states you know nothing moves without citizens power uh, infrastructure doesn't get uh, implemented on their own no authority takes seriously about every area and implement the infrastructure unless there is a pressure from the local local uh, rwa that is my point and wherever as uh, some of the people pointed out wherever there is a strong uh, uh, people movement things are happening and other areas are suffering so at the end of the day as mr hasha and other people said people unity is very important in get things moving at at least at the ground level to get your neighborhood get your uh, all other areas sorted out uh, without that you know people keep creeping about things saying that this is not happening that's not happening 
unfortunately as i said we are not a foreign country nothing happens on its own so at the end of the day i i feel i suggest that we need to work together and make sure that rws are tighten together and we got to collaborate on many aspects and get to know what is happening across uh, different areas and see how people can contribute their expertise and uh, you know uh, and then share the experience and also you know keep pushing things to make the city neat and clean that's my quick summary and uh, just to let you know we are not no longer taksara it's an rk nagara as ganga oh, rightly yeah. mentioned <laughs> so rk nagara has taken a big shape and uh, it's a it's a very large area but we have been pretty successful with our storm water drain project in the last two years fortunately no flooding in our neighborhood and uh, again it's all working with official and 103 ward has been doing a great job overall okay thank you so much thank you thank you thank you for summing that up so well i want to thank everybody <laughs> who joined us today and um, uh, david uh, i want to thank you for being the one of the, the the support that we always lean into whenever we have to write topics about this you're always there for us you're always willing to share your uh, knowledge thank you for joining us today yeah. ganga inspiring presentation thank you for insisting that you will present because obviously pictures speak louder than words yeah. uh, i think thanks we... for allowing allowing me more oh, much more time <laughs> raj thank you for joining us uh please continue to help us understand these complex things with your maps and with your uh, posts uh, we hope we can work more with you at citizen matters to help citizens understand the these issues about the city i want to thank our other panelists as well i think a couple of them had to leave uh once again thank you we'll be back with another webinar next month hope to see all of you there thank you have a good evening